My name is Kwesi Jana Pinte. I'm the president of the Ghana Association of Writers. But for present purposes, I'm a columnist of the Mirror newspaper. Um, I do write a weekly column called The Dial. And I will be reporting on Star Ghana's grand partners in the election call between now and the election. It's um, a project I'm looking forward to with much interest and relish because I'm going to be traveling to half of the country. Another colleague is doing the other half and I'll be meeting with grand partners and their partners and people on whom their activities are going to have an impact and all the rest of it and I'll be reporting weekly. Also, I will be blogging on uh, my own blog, kgapainting.blogspot.com and also reporting via the usual networks, Twitter, Facebook, and all the rest of it. So I'm really excited and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, you seem to really use social media in this election. Now, are you also working on a writer's project on the election? Yes, yes. Um, the organization of writers is um, also networking into the election process because we are very much concerned that reading as both um, a leisure activity, a cultural and a cultural activity, and even as an academic activity, is not what it used to be. And it, you can tell by the way people express themselves formally and informally. So we are great advocates for reading and the building of libraries and all the rest of it. So we have our own election um, process. We have written to all the political parties asking them to indicate their attitudes towards reading, what programs they will put into place. We are advocating particularly the building of a first-class library befitting an oil-producing middle-income country in every regional and district capital in this country. And um, other, other you know, ideas that we have that we want to see in political parties' manifestos, because this is important. This, this sounds like a very interesting project. Uh, where can we get information on it? Oh, well, um, if you come to Powerhouse Roman Ridge, not too far from where we stand right now, you will find us. We have a very um, interesting program coming up. Every first Sunday of every month, we have what we call Gao Sunday. We bring together a lot of people, especially young people, to read their poems and etc. Et and before the election, we will have one Gao Sunday dedicated to peace. We already almost every Gao Sunday hear poems on peace, writings on peace, and especially coming from young people, it's very encouraging. And they would like to use that platform to bring more and more young people, particularly students, to share their creativity, especially how this impacts on what we are all concerned with, peaceful elections, peaceful aftermath, and peaceful, peaceful, peaceful. Uh, talking about peace, we have an election in December, and it is speculated that this is going to be a very, be a very tight election, and uh, it could be a test case for this country, just as 2008 was a test case for this country. We would like you to share this message with you, our viewers. First of all, I'm happy that you say just as 208 was a, t a test case. It will always be a test case. Every election is going to go to the wire because of the, the way our politics are constructed. One day, if you talk to me personally, I'll tell you what I believe because I don't believe in the first past the post, which is creating all the tension. I believe in proportional representation, but that's a different matter. For now, I don't think that the elections being tight should lead us into fear. The thing that we need to understand in this country is that the national interest is bigger than anybody. And once our political parties begin to preach that to their members, that the national interest is bigger than anybody, then it will not matter. Parties will come and go, the country must remain. And for that matter, what we need to do is to put into the wash all our ideas. What is killing this country right now? and leading to all this tension is that between the two political parties in the lead, they have decided that they are putting their interests before Ghana. And this must be the message that unrelentingly we must tell them, that between the NDC and the MPP, you've got professional politicians 
who think the only way they can make a living is through politics. And therefore, they've turned it into a matter of life and death. It ain't a matter of life and death. It ought to be a matter for Ghana. And that must be the message. We should all hammer, and whenever we get the occasion, to tell them that we are talking about Ghana and its development. And for me, where I stand now, I'm thinking about the young people and the future and the future and the future. It's not about our stomachs. And the politicians are turning it into a stomach issue. That is where the crisis is. Because after all, outside of politics, who the toss cares who, where people come from in this country? As we've met here for the past, for yesterday and today, have you heard where I come from? Do I know where you come from? Does it matter? But only when it comes to putting the ballot paper into the box, then we begin to, this person is from there. Therefore, this is the politicians talking of the, the trouble. Is the politicians talking of the trouble. And we must tell them enough is enough. This country is a peaceful country. Nothing's going to happen. Let's not, you know, kick ourselves about it and be getting collective high blood pressure. <laughs> For what? Thank you very much.